Hello, my name is Ian Kelly and I'm part of the Virtual API Cloud team. I wanted to show you three new capabilities that we've added in the last couple of weeks within Virtual API Cloud. Let's sign in and we'll start on cloning an API. We'll talk about taking an API private and making a private API that's only shareable to the individuals with the URL and also how we inspect traffic. So the ability to clone an API is available on any existing APIs that I have using this handy button over here to the right that looks a little bit like a copy paste. It's also available on any of the public APIs of which there's currently 327 public APIs and it's available from any of the example APIs that we provide. Let's make a quick clone of the bookstore example. You'll notice the clone button here and I can clone the API on the overview screen. Once I've cloned that API it'll ask me what I want the name of that API to be and I can modify or edit any of these pairs. So if I want to modify how to avoid huge ships using steering, I can save that and I can create my new API. So let's create our API. You'll notice right next to this create button is also created as private. We'll talk about that in just a second. So now I have a clone of my API. I can go into try it now and we can see if our how to avoid use ships using steering worked and we can make a couple of requests of this or I can search for a specific book and execute, return that and then I can go in and look at recent traffic. This recent traffic that we have stores the last couple of transactions and it stores them for only about an hour. You can see the specific details of how long ago the request was made, the elapsed time that we took to serve the request, and where the origin was where we served up that request. You can see all of the request and response details that were used by the client, and you can see the data within the body that was sent. You can also clearly and prominently see the HTTP response code utilized. This is very valuable if you have a customer or a client trying to call your virtual API and you want to make sure that you've seen the traffic. There's even a refresh button here that lets us refresh the screen every time uh, we press the button, which will give us the most recent transactions. So we can quickly and easily troubleshoot an issue with a client. Finally, let's talk about making an API private. You'll notice that within the URL of this API, I have vapi.ca.com forward slash API forward slash my username and then finally the name of the API. When I make this API private, it will replace all personally identified information of my username and the API name with an API key. This API key is required to execute the API. I can call this API in the same exact way that I call my other API with my username, my API name. It simply uses all of this as the base path. You can still call it with Bookstore Book Search and get all the features and functionality that you'd like to see. You can do that from any browser or any client and return that information. We can also see in our recent traffic inspector even calls such as this one that was four seconds ago from our browser. So as I increment this and make five or six calls, we'll see all of these calls in our recent traffic. Of course, all of this is on our private API. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoy Virtual API Cloud. If you'd like to give us feedback or you'd like to know more information, please go to communities.ca.com and look for the Virtual API Cloud community. Thank you very much. Have a great day.